Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. On this channel, we spend our time looking at fantasy of all sorts, from books to movies to video games, and applying the characters within into the tabletop game Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And today, we're going to be looking at a character from the series of books that take us to Wonderland, the land that lives underneath the ground. We're going to be looking at one of its most iconic characters, the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter is a little gnome that exists in the cartoon forests of Alice in Wonderland's dreams. He is, in fact, a charlatan and a forest gnome with a chaotic neutral alignment. He probably is a few hundred years old, about four feet tall, weighs about 50 pounds, with green eyes, white skin, and reddish hair. But what kind of class would he be in a D&D &D campaign? Let's have a look. Personally, I think that the Mad Hatter would be an arcane trickster rogue. For not only is he a roguish-like individual with, you know, some abilities that uh, would show him as a skilled character, but he also has a little bit of magic, as many characters in Underworld do. Uh... As far as his stats go, I would think that he would have a strength of about 12. He's, uh, you know, decent at grabbing and shoving things around. A dexterity of 14, he's relatively quick. His constitution's about 10. He's not much of a fighter as far as taking hits goes. But he's actually a bit of a genius. He is really, really smart, even if he is a bit mad. I gave him an intelligence of 20. His wisdom, though, not great at all. I actually gave it an 8. He doesn't seem to know where he is half the time, and can't really create strategies. It all just kind of comes out of madness. But he is very charming. Uh, Alice is quite a fan of his, and uh, I gave him a 16 for his charisma. He is proficient in dexterity saving throws, as well as intelligence saving throws. However, due to his madness, I have decided to give him just blanket disadvantage on intelligent saving throws. Because really, who knows if he's going to be able to remember the things that he's supposed to know or not. His skills, he's proficient in deception and history, performance and persuasion, and he is expert. He has expertise in the sleight of hand skill. He speaks common, gnomish, as well as thieves can't, is skilled in light armor, Simple weapons, as well as swords, rapiers, and hand crossbows. He also is skilled in several different kinds of tools. Thieves, tinkers, weavers, he is a hatter after all, and brewer's tool. I bet he could make a mean tea, as well as some beer or wine, who knows. He doesn't really wear armor, per se, but he does have some decent cloth clothing on, so I just kind of said that he has cloth armor, which is... And I stand in for padded armor, basically. He does have an arcane focus, and I think that it's his hat. As the Mad Hatter, he's very famous for his creation of hats, and I reckon he wears a magical one that allows him to cast his arcane trickster spells. And he does know quite a few. I actually put him at level 11. We'll get to the spells that he does know here in a sec. He does carry a dagger on him, just in case he needs to defend himself. Has 55 hit points, an armor class of 13, and a speed of 25. As with all gnomes, he can see in the dark with dark vision, has the gnome cunning ability, uh, and he can speak with the small beasts of the forest. He can attack with sneak attack, and has many other roguish abilities, such as cunning action, uncanny dodge, evasion, and reliable talent. All things that make him quite a skilled individual and good at avoiding things. Very good at disappearing when he needs to. He also has the Mage Hand Ledger Domain power, meaning that he can use the Mage Hand cantrip, and it's actually invisible, which makes him look almost like he has telekinesis. And he's very good at ambushing people with the magical ambush. He can use his spells stealthily, unlike most people. But I did say we'd get to his spells. 
And uh, as an intelligence caster, his madness may not do him well with saving throws, but it certainly makes him a powerful magic user. He can cast Minor Illusion, Mage Hand, Prestidigitation, the Friends Cantrip, and the Dancing Lights Cantrip. Not much of an offensive caster, but, you know, he isn't really trying to pick fights. He can cast Find Familiar. Uh, I think that the March Hare or the Dormouse could easily be considered a familiar of the Arcane Trickster, depending on how you look at it. He can cast Disguise Self. He can cast Charm Person. He can cast Unseen Servant, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and Color Spray. All very, very quirky spells that uh, are easy to roleplay with the Mad Hatter. And he does have a few second-level spells. Enlarge Reduce... Something we can easily uh, imagine, given the magic of Wonderland. And Suggestion. These are uh, thing magics that we could uh, visualize being used on Alice or the other creatures of the land down beneath the earth. All in all, I think the Mad Hatter is a very quirky individual and deserves uh, your respect. He might be insane... He might be a strange little man that runs around the forests of Wonderland, but truth be told, he is skilled, he is powerful, and he is a well-deserving character uh, as a quirky individual in your next D&D campaign. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below, and keep your eyes peeled for more character videos coming down the line soon. Have a good one, my friends.